Welcome everybody. Week number two, talking about active and passive defense. I'm going to start by just a quick review for those of you who are like I was back in my greener days. I had no idea that defense was anything but just plain old garden variety defense, but there's a difference in, in the way you play defense on many, many hands. And there are clues from the bidding that can give you an idea about which one to select. Uh, and then within the, the two types, there are various ways of defending actively or passively. We talked about the five primary lines of defense, uh, forcing the declarer to rust, particularly in the long trump hand. Remember, we, we say over and over again, and you only add to your trick total when you rust in the short trump hand, and that is usually the dummy. In the case of a Jacoby transfer or a Michael's Q bid, that will be declarer's hand that will be the short trump hand generally. But if you can force the declarer to rough in the long trump hand, what happens then is he loses control of the hand, cannot cash his side suit winners, and the defenders then effectively take over the hand from him. Having been the victim of this kind of defense before, I can tell you it is very, very effective. One time I asked Ron Hinkey what to do when I was being forced, and he said, just don't play against such good opponents. Well, okay. Uh, with one breath, you tell me to play against the better players so I can learn. And, and then you tell me not to play against such good opponents so I don't find myself the victim of a force. You take the good and the bad, I guess. But forcing the declarer to rough, you can be actively defending, passively defending, creating trump tricks for you and your partner. Or you can cut down on the declarer's power to trump losers in the short term hand. Now, there are inferences all over the place as to which way you should choose between active and passive defense. There are many sources of information. You can, you can figure out about how many points that your partner has. We've talked about the number rules several times. If your opponents are in a game contract, that means they have about 26 points. So you and your partner should have about 14. You take the number you have and subtract it from 14, and that's roughly what your partner will have. You can count the points, as I said, or you can count the tricks that they have shown. Maybe somebody opened with a week two bid and they wind up in game. Well, you know, the long trump hand has at least six cards in the trump suit. So you know that there are some tricks. Uh, you and your partner can signal each other if you have added signaling to your defense, and you can count the distribution based on what the bidding shows. So I'm going to move ahead just a little bit here. I don't want to go through all of the, the different examples, but if you can force the declarer, that is the number one choice of defenses and takes priority over all other forms of defense. If you have found that the declarer has a short suit, uh, every time you get the lead, you lead one of those, trying to force him to play one of his trumps from his hand. Once he runs out on the board also, then you have to reconsider that strategy because now you're giving him a rough and a slough. But if you find out or you can figure out from the beginning that the uh, declarer has a short suit, generally that will be your long suit. So you just lead it at every opportunity. Now, there are times when you want to be very active in your defense. Say, for instance, one of your opponents has bid and rebid and maybe rebid again a suit, showing uh, a suit with at least six cards in it. That means there's, there's a long-running suit, and any losers that the declarer has in his hand or on the board are going to go away on those cards. Uh, if you can look at your hand and see that the suits outside the trump suit are breaking evenly, in other words, if your hand is fairly well balanced, your partner's hand is, is most likely fairly well balanced as well. If those side suits are breaking evenly, then there's a chance that the declarer is going to get tricks from length in a suit. 
Maybe the opponent's made a slam try. Or any time your tricks are in danger of going away, you want to defend actively. That includes underleading a king, for instance. We've got to get our tricks and we've got to get them now. Because I can tell that if we don't, the declarer is going to run a long suit. If my, and if I underlead a king and it costs me a trick, well, I had nothing to lose because declarer was making this contract anyway. So when it's right to defend actively, you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. You use aggressive leads. Maybe you lead an ace not supported by the king, hoping your partner will give you a come on in terms of a high card saying, come partner, I, I have the king, or maybe he's showing you a doubleton and he's hoping for a rough. You might try leading that unsupported ace. You might underlead a king or just do anything else that's considered a risky lead. But on the other hand, when your tricks are safe, then you want to sit back and make the declarer do all the work. Sometimes the side suits are splitting badly. Let's, let's don't help the declarer. Let's just sit back and, and make him uh, deal with the bad breaks. When you have one hand that's very strong and the other one is weak, for instance, a two club opener, and we end up only in game, that's a signal to defend passively. When there's no evidence of a strong side suit, say for instance, neither, neither opponent bid and rebid a suit. Sometimes you don't have anything attractive to lead against a no trump contract. Well, that might be the time to lead from three small. Or if you have good cards in their suits, this is not a time to underlead that suit. Uh, this is a time to make the declarer find those cards. And then finally, any time you're defending against a no trump slam, six no trump or seven no trump or any grand slam lead very passively many many times when a declarer is in six no trump he has 11 tricks off the top and he just has to find the 12th one if you under lead an honor chances are really good that you just gave him that 12th trick so be very careful not to under lead any honors against six no trump if you finesse your partner, that's nothing that the declarer couldn't have done himself. So just be sure you don't finesse yourself when you're leading against a slam. Now, here's another tip that I want to remind you about. You know, when, when you're beginning, we, we teach uh, folks who are new to the game that if they don't have a three card sequence, for a lead against no trump, they should lead fourth from the longest and strongest. But you should be very careful about leading a four card suit, a ragged suit. In other words, one that does not have nice high spot cards, one that has spaces between those cards headed by a single honor. Even when you have two honors in the suit uh, against no trump, this can be very, very chancy. What ends up happening usually in that case is that the declarer wins a cheap trick because does your partner have a card in the suit that can help you? Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's amazing to me how often my partners don't. You know, I've seen it work for other people but it doesn't often work for me. So when I'm leading against no trump, if, if my best suit is a four card suit, say queen nine, seven, four, I'm not gonna lead the four. I'm, I'm gonna lead something from three small and see, see what happens. I'm going to lead very passively. Now then, okay, the other way that, that you can, another line of defense that you can adopt is to create trump tricks for yourself. Well, how can I get a trump trick? Well, I can rough a loser or, or rough one of the declarer's cards. If I can, if I have a short suit, I can lead it, make myself void. And then I, I can get a trick with, with a trump in that case very often. 
Maybe I have length in one of the opponent's side suits. That might mean that my partner is short in that suit. I can try to promote a Trump honor. Maybe I can even affect a, a Trump uppercut. Uppercuts literally create tricks where none existed before. It is very common for people to lead shortness, isn't it? And then try to rough out the declarer's tricks. Very widely used line of defense. And that means that when you have that kind of situation, that it can be abused. Sometimes when you have a really short suit, that is declarer's long suit. And when you lead it, you are helping the declarer to set it up. So if you're short in a suit that the, that the declarer has bid and it didn't end up as the Trump suit, be very careful about doing that because you may end out just helping him set up that long suit. So in other words, you need to be pretty circumspect in using that particular line of defense. Very often it's effective, but if the, uh, the opponent bid the suit, you may just be helping them out. The one thing to remember is you don't want to look for a Trump trick when you have a, or for a roughing trick when you have a natural Trump trick. If you have a natural Trump trick, then you need to retain that. Say if you have a guarded queen and you have shortness, you really aren't interested in, in roughing the trick. Uh, because you have a natural trump trick that you're going to get anyway. In, in most cases, it is better to take the trick in trumps rather than uh, helping the declarer out, because maybe, maybe the uh, declarer needs to find that queen of trumps that you're holding. And if you shorten your holding by trumping, then he's going to drop your queen on his ace and king. So uh, it is better to avoid leading shortness when you have a natural trump trick. Now, you also need to have a high honor in the trump suit or some way of getting back into the lead so you can give your partner the rough or your partner's got to have the high trump honor. In other words, You've got to have a way of gaining the lead before all the trumps have been drawn for you to be able to get that, that rough. So uh, sometimes, though, the situation is just desperate and you don't have any other option and you've got to lead the short suit and uh, you want to get a rough. Now, the last way of defending is cutting down on declarer's roughing power. In other words, leading trumps. All of you know, have heard the old saying, I know, when in doubt, lead trumps. Well, a better way of saying that would be when there is no doubt, lead a trump. There is no doubt when, number one, declarer is playing in his second suit. His first suit is not ace, king, queen, jack, ten, except in the most unusual circumstances. He has losers in that first suit. What's he going to do with them? Well, he knows his partner is short in that suit because he didn't support it. He has to be short in that suit. Therefore, he's going to use the shortness in that suit and dummy to trump out some of those losers. So when declarer is playing in his second suit, put a trump on the table. Or uh, you've heard me talk about responders taking a preference. When the responder takes preference, that doesn't guarantee a fit. All it says is, well, I prefer your first suit to the second suit. So if that's the case, there aren't going to be very many trumps in the dummy. If your side has a trump stack, that might be a, a time to lead a trump. Uh, if the hand is a misfit right from the beginning, uh, then maybe the opponents are playing in a 4-3 fit. The fate worse than death is to have shortness in the hand with four trumps and have the defenders find it and then put pressure on you by trying to make you uh, rough in the hand with four trumps and all of a sudden you're down to six trumps and they have six trumps and there you are. When the bidding tells you that the dummy may be short in the suit. Maybe he bid two suits and then he raised a third. That fourth suit has to be short, doesn't it? 
maybe the dummy, uh, maybe maybe declarer suggested no Trump and dummy denied it. That might be a time to lead a Trump. If you have good control in the other suits or leading the other suits would be an aggressive lead and you've determined that you want to defend passively, then lead a Trump. And finally, when the opponents are sacrificing, it is almost a commandment that a Trump hit the table. If you and your partner know the hand belongs to you and you bid game in spades and the opponents come along and sacrifice in five diamonds, and most of the time the five level belongs to the opponents, then if you're going to let them play the hand, then the way they're counting on getting their tricks is by roughing because they don't have power. What they have is length in a suit. So you want to cut down on that roughing power by putting a trump on the table when they have sacrificed. Let's go on to this next. I'm going to find where we stopped. Here we are. We are at, at slide 19 is where we stopped last week. And I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to go back to slide 18 here and talk about the examples where we ended up. Uh, on this hand, north and south have been one spade, three spades, four spades. Nothing to indicate that there's a long side suit uh, or that there's anything necessary for an active defense. Mr. West is on lead over here. And the first thing he does is discards the idea of leading a diamond. Does everybody know why he wouldn't lead a diamond? Anybody have a thought? Nobody has a thought about why you, why you wouldn't lead a diamond there. Well, what's wrong with this suit? Number one, we have the ace. Why wouldn't we lead the ace? Unsupported ace, and he doesn't have a sequence. Well, He's that's like, exactly right. He, the number one worst lead in bridge is low from a suit headed by an ace against a, against a suit contract. In other words, if I were to lead one of these low cards in diamonds under leading the ace, that, that's considered to be the number one worst lead in bridge. Linda Hughes is fond of saying, if you under lead an ace against a suit contract, you deserve what you get when you see the singleton, dumb, singleton king hit the dummy. You are never getting that ace because you under led an ace against a suit contract. Now, against a no trump contract, all, the, the rule is completely different. Your ace is never going to get trumped in a no trump contract. But in this situation here, the lead of the ace promises the king. Notice what he does if he leads the ace. He sets up the king and the queen for the declarer. He does nothing for his partner, does he? This is why you don't lead aces not supported by the king. There's a reason the opponents have the contract. Either they were more aggressive than you were, or they have the power. And in this case, they have the power. That makes it highly unlikely that your partner has the king of diamonds. Every now and again, that works. But uh, oh, oh, over time, that will not give you good results. As I said, the bidding doesn't give us any indication that there's any need to be aggressive here. So under leading the king of clubs, well, it might help me. As it happens, my partner has the queen, uh, which he's going to have to play. But because the declarer has the 10, he's not going to play the jack. And your partner is going to have to play the queen to keep the declarer from getting a cheap trick if I underlead this king of clubs. So since I don't think active defense is indicated, I, I'm not going, going to do that. Same reasoning here on the hearts. Leading low from the King Doubleton in hearts is just inviting two losers. You're, you're seldom going to get a trick with that king when you have a King Doubleton and you lead low from it. If your partner bid the suit, lead the king first, not the little one. So where does that leave us? That leaves us with a trump. Leaves us with a trump. In this case, it gives nothing away. Say I haven't finessed myself in anything. And usually the declarer will smile at me when I do that and say, why, thank you for helping me draw my trump, Susan. And you know, I said, just ask me anytime. I'm always looking to please, you know. 
So after the opening lead, the declarer will draw the remaining trumps, and he's going to lead a low diamond toward the king. What are you going to do here if you're sitting west? Remember the old adage, second hand low? If you hop up there with that ace, just like if you had led it, then he gets a trick with the king and with the queen. Ella, did you have a question? I see your hand up. What uh, did you say they should lead? A, you, a trump. A, a trump. I had down from last week that you would lead the five of clubs. If you were leading aggressively, you would, but I'm not leading aggressively. Okay, so you would lead the four of spades? I, well, I, I follow the bottom of something, top of nothing kind of guideline here. Um, it's, it's not really critical here because my, my partner will figure out when he sees four cards in the dummy, as he will. We expect them to have nine trumps, one spade, three spades. Uh, that three spade bid indicates four card support. So when the partner sees only one trump in his hand, he's going to know I have three. Uh, so it's not critically important here. If you and your partner use Boston leads, then you would lead the seven. If you don't, you would lead the four. So you would know to lead actively by doing the trump when they both have the trump. No, a, a leading a trump is generally not an active defense. Usually, it's passive. But you always want to at least very strong and consider leading a trump when the declarer is playing in his second suit. Because, as I said, most all of his cards in his first suit are not going to be winners. He's going to need to do something with the losers in that first suit. And we know from the bidding that the dummy doesn't have support for that suit. He has shortness in that suit. So... The declarer will try to use the trumps on the dummy to get rid of the losers in his first bid suit there. That's a very effective way of dealing with those losers. And in order to cut down on that, many defenders lead a trump. Anytime you want to lead passively, you're generally going to lead a trump. But there are, that doesn't mean there aren't very strong indications when a trump should be led. Even, even if I have a strong indication that I need to lead a trump, I'm even going to underlead the king of trumps, that kind of thing, because it is so important to take the, the trumps off the dummy. When declarer can make his trump separately, man, he can run up a total that just will make your head spin. And in order to cut down on that, you have to lead a trump, even if it's a very aggressive lead. In this case, we're leading a trump because it's passive defense. The rest of my hand is not suitable. The diamond suit has to be discarded immediately as being appropriate. And these other two suits would call for underleading a king, and that would be an aggressive defense. Notice if I decided to lead the low heart. See what the declarer has? I mean, uh, if I lead, if I lead a club, then uh I may end up getting that king of clubs or I may not. I don't know that my partner has the queen. The declarer may have the queen. The queen may be on the dummy, in which case uh, the declarer is probably going to try to take the trick with the queen. So in order not to lead aggressively or make life hard on myself, I'm leading a trump here. That's usually a very passive defense, which is what's called for here. The important thing to remember here is when when uh, declarer starts trying to uh, develop tricks in the side suit and he leads low toward the king of diamonds, West has to play low smoothly. Let him have his king. He's always entitled to one trick on this holding. He's not entitled to two. He'll get two if you either lead the ace of diamonds or if you jump up with the ace of diamonds the first time he leads them. It can be hard when you're sitting there looking at the king saying, well, good grief, you know, I hate to let him have it with the king. Well, if you jump up with the ace, he's going to get a trick with the king and with his own queen. 
so it's important for second hand to play low. The king will win the trick, but when he leads back toward the queen, now you take the queen with the ace, and guess what? Your partner's jack controls the third round. Now, as it turns out, you're not going to get a third round trick, but the point I'm making is that declarer gets only one diamond trick, not two. You don't want to give him two diamond tricks. He's not entitled to them. So just playing passively, when he finally takes the ace of diamonds, he can just return another diamond. The same suit that the declarer led. Partner will play his jack and declarer will rough. He may play off the, the hearts now. When he's on the board, he may lead a heart back or he may have a trump on the board to get, get to, the, to the board and lead a heart back. He would like, look at this holding in clubs. He can't afford to lose two clubs. The way he can avoid losing two clubs is if the opponents break the suit for him. When you're defending passively, you don't break new suits for the declarer. When you take a trick, you just lead back a suit that he's already led. So if you continue to play that way, no matter what the declarer does in clubs, so long as the defenders remember the basic rules of defense, the declarer will lose two tricks in clubs. He will lose the king of hearts and he'll lose the king of diamonds for a one trick set. If the opponents break the club suit for him, he loses only one trick. Now those basic rules of defense are, if the declarer here, the south hand leads a club from his hand, west has to play low. I know how tempting it is to jump up with the king there. But if you do that, then declarer will know, hey, I can finesse, I can go to the board and I can finesse the other guy for the queen. When you're missing two honors, 75% of the time they are in different hands. So West has to be disciplined here and play low. The jack will hit the table and your partner will take the queen. Maybe he leads a heart back. Declarer will trumpet. And now he has to try to do something with the clubs again. But notice, he still has to lose a trick to the king because he led toward the jack. Your partner East takes the queen. If the other, if the other thing happens and he leads the jack off the board, intending to let it ride. East has to be sure to cover it. Cover an honor with an honor, remember? He covers, and now he either has to let him hold the trick or he has to play the ace. And then now the king nine here is sitting over the 10. So he's going to get two tricks. No matter what he does, if he has to attack the club suit first, he loses two tricks in the suit. This is passive defense. Classically, classic passive defense. Notice how effective it is. Here's another example. This time it's East and West who are bidding in spades. And North, South are defending. North is going to play his ace of hearts here. East is, East is the declarer. And then he leads the queen. Very often it is... Uh, a good idea, or at least some pairs believe it's a good idea to lead the queen. When you have a sequence like this, lead the top one and then the bottom. One. And that tells your partner that you have the card in between. There are times when that can be very confusing, but that's a subject for another, another day. Now, partner follows with the ace, he's going to play the two. He, do, he doesn't have it. He, your partner has every reason to believe that you have the ace and king. He doesn't have the queen, so he's going to play a discouraging signal here, the two. Then he plays the six. He still doesn't like it. You've taken the ace and the queen of hearts. Is he going to defend passively or actively? 
Well, one of the best ways to get the answer to that question is to look at the dummy. Look at the dummy. Look at that club suit. Look at that club suit. Any defender should feel very threatened by that club suit. Any losers that West has are going away on those clubs as soon as he pulls the trumps. And we know from the bidding that there's at least an eight card fit and maybe a nine card fit. So it is absolutely imperative for North and South to get their tricks now because of this very threatening side suit here. We're not gonna lead another heart. We know the dummy, the dummy is void in hearts. Uh, there's, there's no future in that. So I've got to think of something else. Clubs is not an option. Those are well controlled by the opponents. Trumps are not an option. That only leads a diamond. That means I have to be very aggressive here and underlead my King Jack of Diamonds. I have, I'm thinking here, if you notice, I have 13 points. The opponents are in game. That should give them about 26. Due to distribution, they may have fewer. But I have 13 points. It's not highly likely that, that my partner has an entry, but this is our only chance. So I have to lead low from that King Jack of Diamonds, hoping my partner has the ace and can lead it back to me. Because we have to get two diamond tricks before we give up the lead. Because once we give up the lead, it's all over but the shot. Normally, you would never think about underleading a combination like this, but this dummy means that you have to defend very actively to get your tricks. Those, those losers in diamonds, he can throw away all but one of them. That means he loses two hearts in a diamond and makes his bid if you don't grab two diamond tricks right now. Any other lead gives the contract to the declarer. Here's another example. One spade, two spades. That happens pretty regularly, doesn't it? The opponents have God suit, and uh, for whatever reason, nobody chose to balance. So what are we going to do? At trick one, West leads the king of hearts, and we get the king, the four, the three, and the two. Notice the dummy has the ace, but declarer didn't call for it. Wonder why that is. Hmm. Are we going to lead actively or passively here, folks? Anybody have a thought? Well, I can tell you that one of the key things that you need to look at is the card that your partner played. If you guys are not using signals, you're mus missing a major opportunity to help your partner on defense, especially. This two of hearts here tells partner that, hey, I don't have any help for you in this suit. I don't have a touching honor. I don't have the ace. I don't have the jack. This is a really common situation that newer players can be victimized by uh, wily de declarers. If you lead, continue with the queen of hearts, the ace of hearts is going to take the trick, and Mr. Declarer is going to have the jack of hearts in his hand for a second trick in that suit. This is known as a bath coup, named for the town in southern England where it was originally, the play was originally developed during whist days. But when your partner gives you the signal of the two saying, I can't help you here, partner, uh, don't have a touching honor. If he had either the ace or the jack, he would encourage by playing a high card. Well, you know he doesn't have the ace. The ace is in the dummy. So his play of the two says, I don't have the jack. This means I need to back off and do something else. What do you think he might do here? What might be a good thing to do? 
Hello Club. Get it from? Well, I, I personally would uh, probably choose a Trump myself. I, I don't particularly want to finesse my queen of clubs. I see the 10 sitting there in the dummy, but I see a very flat dummy, a very flat dummy, no threatening side suits. My partner has warned me off about con continuing hearts. So I'm probably going to back up and say, that's a, that's a pancake of a dummy, no roughing value. This means I should defend passively. What's the classic passive defense? A trump. I, I would probably be inclined to lead a trump myself because I'm not going to underlead the ace of diamonds. I'm still on lead and I'm not going to underlead it. And I'm not going to put the ace on the table because I have to figure that the declarer has at least one honor in this suit. And I like to use my aces to catch kings and queens, not twos, threes, and fours. I don't, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I put the ace of diamonds on the table, that's all I'm going to get is just worthless junk. So here's the whole hand. So if you play passively, the defense will get one spade, two hearts. You will eventually get another heart trick if you don't continue with the queen at trick two. You'll get one diamond and two clubs for a one trick set. There's no source of tricks in the dummy, so we need to play passively. That means West needs to switch to a trump at trick two. This low heart here says, can't help you. You know, uh, if you've got a solid heart suit, good for you. But I'm telling you, I cannot help you if you have only the king and the queen. I don't have the jack, and you know I don't have the ace, because there it is. This is passive defense at its best. There are a lot of declarers that will make two spades on this layout, because the defense will help them. But if you just avoid helping the declarer, he can't possibly make that contract. Let's take a look at another one here. North opens a spade. South bids two hearts. North bids four hearts. What do we think? Trick one. We have a singleton trump. We don't lead that. The <laughs> North bids spades, so we know pretty, pretty much right off that um, leading a spade is not going to be productive. And under leading the queen will most likely finesse myself. So at trick one, I'm just going to lead nobody bid diamonds. So I'm going to lead the king of diamonds. Your partner plays the ace. Declare plays the seven. Back comes the two of diamonds. Declare plays the queen. You play the king and the jack falls. Now, that's eight of them that have been played, and I can see that uh, the, de the declarer and the dummy are both out of diamonds. I know that because declarer would not have played the queen, having the jack in the dummy, unless he had to. So I'm pretty certain that my partner had started with four and I had five. Now, are we going to defend actively or passively here? What do you think? What do we know about the spade suit? We know the spade suit is not breaking favorably, don't we? Uh, we know there's no eight card fit. There, there's, there could be a seven card fit. The spade suit's not coming in for the declarer. We know that, but he doesn't know it yet. What does that indicate? When the side suits are breaking badly, play passively. So we're going to play passively here. That, that is absolutely the right thing to do here. You absolutely need to play so that you don't give anything to the declarer. And once again, the best choice for a passive lead is a trump. Normally, you don't lead a singleton trump because it tends to compromise your partner's holding. 
but you don't want to help declare her with a, with a spade suit. And underleading the queen would be a very aggressive lead. So that leaves only trumps. Now, when the declarer tries to set up the spades, he can't. He does not have enough entries to the board to be able to do it. So there you are. If you help him with the spade suit by leading the queen, well, he may end up being able to do that then because he's on the board already. He can lead the ace and he may end up being able to set up that suit while the king of clubs is still there. He's hoping to get a trick with that, isn't he? He could certainly get to the board with the queen of hearts. So the best play here is to return a trump. So even after he draws the rest of them, Declarer the has to lose two club tricks to go along with the two diamond tricks he has already lost. Because sitting west, you looked at the suit, the first suit on the dummy, you know that it is not breaking well. He's not going to be able to set it up and discard losers. So that's a sign that you do not need to defend actively. You should just be passive. And in most cases, being passive means leading a trump. Now, what happens if you finesse your partner's trump honor when you do that? Well, that's nothing that the declarer can't do himself. Remember, your partner is sitting over there in the pocket. And if he has an honor in the trump suit, well, he has an honor in the trump suit. And that's the way the cookie crumbles on this hand. You're not doing anything that the declarer can't do himself. So here's a little different situation. We're in four hearts again, same bidding. Trick one, six of diamonds to the ace and partner's hand. Back comes the two, the queen, the king, and the jack. Now what do we think? Just a tiny bit of difference in this hand, isn't there? Just a little bit. Notice the spade suit is better than it was in that previous hand. That's a pretty darn good looking spade suit, isn't it? And you can tell from looking at your spades that that 10 is going to be good. And that means the two is probably going to be good as well. You're sitting there looking at five spade tricks. I'm not getting any more diamond tricks. I may or may not have a trump trick. It doesn't look too promising from my end of the table. That means if my partner has a trump honor, unless it's the ace, it's highly finessable. And he's not going to get it. So what are we going to do here? I've, I've got a completely different situation. I've got to get two tricks from somewhere. I'm, I don't have anything coming in the spade suit. I don't believe we have anything coming in the trump suit. We've taken our two diamond tricks. That leaves only clubs, doesn't it? In this case, because this spade suit is so imposing and, and presents such a danger, you need to lead that low club. This is, this is you're just hoping, folks. When, when you have a picture in your mind of what it takes to set a contract, or if you're the declarer to make a contract, then you play as though that is the situation that exists because there's no future in playing as though it doesn't exist, right? If you've got to have a certain layout of the cards to be successful, then just go with the assumption that that's the way they exist. So we've got to be active here. Active means under leading an honor sometimes, and the club suit is the best shot here. If, you, if we're going to lead actively, we need to lead the five of clubs. And sure enough, look at my partner's club holding. Look at my partner's club holding. I've led low. I mean, if I really, if I can see the king of clubs in the, in the dummy, I'm tempted to lead the queen, but I don't know for sure that my partner has the jack. I have led low, indicating to my partner that I have something in the suit. Bottom of something, top of nothing, remember? You can either lead low and hope your partner 
has the jack. If he doesn't, then the declarer is going to get a quick trick. But many times you want to trap that king and you would lead the queen. Now that assumes you're hoping that your partner has the jack. Your partner has to have the ace and jack of clubs for that to work. If you lead the five of clubs, in order to cover it, declarer has to play the king. Your partner sitting, sitting east over here shouldn't automatically slap down the ace. You should keep that ace over the king and the dummy. He should play the jack and hope to goodness that the card that you led from was the queen. In this case, you're taking a bit of a risk if you play the queen because you may be setting up the jack for the opponents. But you don't have anything to lose here. You know that the declarer is going to get at least three discards from this spade suit because it's breaking evenly. So you've got to grab your tricks and you've got to grab them now. If you don't have a second club trick, then you are never beating the contract anyway. So what you have to do is play as though the, the layout that you need is in fact the one that exists. Um, if you lead the five, you give your partner a bit of a problem as to what to play. Um, but if you lead the queen, declarer's got to cover it. Uh, and if he doesn't, well, then just lead the eight. The king will be played and he'll take the ace and you've got your two club tricks. Uh, that's why South has to play the king, hoping that you have underled the ace and are trying to make him guess. So without the switch, at, tw at trick three here, after you've taken two diamond tricks, all of these two club losers go away on the spades if you don't take your club tricks right now. That's defending actively. Here's another example. East wins the ace of hearts at trick one, and what should he do? The bidding went one diamond, one spade, four spades. That north hand is a pretty fine hand, isn't it? This, this to me says that that's a strong hand. And, uh, you know, South didn't bid on after North showed a hand worth 19 to 21 points in support of spades. So that tends to make me think that he's not terribly strong. There was no slam attempt here. So this is a, an Example of a strong hand opposite a weak hand. So this helps us decide how to defend. Should the defense play actively or passively? Well, we can see that after we win the ace here, because <laughs> one of these honors has to come down on the jack of hearts that was led, return, returning a heart. Um, doesn't give away anything. The player is always entitled to that trick and he can keep it. But if we need to defend actively, maybe we should turn, return something besides the heart. What should we do here? We've got an example of a strong hand opposite a weak hand. Anybody have any opinions as to how we should defend? In general, when you have a strong hand and a, and a relatively weak hand, you want to defend passively. But the thing that should catch your eye is this diamond suit right here. Look at your hand. You have nothing in diamonds. If your partner has the king of diamonds, it's a dead duck, isn't it? He's not getting the diamonds. The diamonds are going to set up very nicely. For declarer, if he's missing the king, if he's not missing the king, oh my goodness, it's really bad then. So we got our only trick that we had in hearts. We're only getting one because of that king queen doubleton there. So in other words, it this may look like a situation where we should defend passively, but because of those diamonds in the dummy, we need to rethink that. That looks pretty dangerous to me. Three honors, ace, ace, king, queen, I'm sorry, ace, queen, 10, nine, that's three honors and a pusher there. That, that looks pretty intimidating. I don't have the king. I don't have the jack. If my partner has either one of them, they're not taking a trick. The only way 
we're going to get any more tricks is if we have something in one of the black suits. Obviously, partner's going to have to have either the ace or king of trumps if we have a chance. And then he needs to have an honor in clubs. One of the two. These are the things that we have to have. So we have to take something in clubs. What he needs to do is play his little club, saying to partner, hey, bottom of something, top of nothing here. So the declarer will play low. West must play that king of clubs to force the ace. Now then, later when he wins the trump king, he knows to put a club on the table, not a heart. I mean, he can, he can see the dummy the same as his partner can. Partner told him where he has another trick. And notice what we have on the board. We have the jack and the nine left. Queen and the 10 left in the east hand. No matter which card Declarer plays, here comes two tricks in clubs for the defense. This is one instance where it looks like passive is right, but when you look closely and you see that diamond suit, you realize, no, uh -uh. got to get some tricks, got to get some tricks. The only place I can get them We've got to have three more tricks. We've taken one trick in hearts. We've got to have three. Partner has to have a trump on her. And he has to have something in clubs. If he doesn't have both of those, we're not beating this thing. So the best chance to beat it is to lead a low club, hoping your partner has the king. You have the queen here, but you've got to have two club tricks. And then you've got to have a trump trick, too. This is a tall order. It's a tall order. As it happens, this is exactly the way this hand is laid out. That's because it's a lesson hand. I admit that. You know, a, a hand that's dealt in the middle of a, ga of a game isn't a lesson hand, so it may or may not work out. But if you lead the three, saying, partner, I have something, he plays the king. He has to remember to play third hand, third hand high here, forcing the ace. Then when Declarer has to take the trump finesse, he's missing five trumps and, and the king. So he has to take a finesse. The partner will win a trick with the king and return a club. Here's the jack nine with the queen 10 sitting over it. If Declarer calls for the nine, your partner will play the 10 because he can see the jack right there. Then he'll put the queen on the table, crossing his fingers, that the declarer has a third club, and sure enough, he does. And, and the contract is one down, one down, because of accurately defending actively. All right. Here's another example. If South bids a heart, North bids one no trump, because he doesn't have three cards, you know, six to nine points, and then South bids four hearts. What does that indicate to you? That to me indicates a pretty much a self-sufficient suit with a big hand. So opening lead is the 10 of diamonds here, folks, and you're sitting in the east hand. He takes the first trick with the ace. Declarer drops the king. Now what? Now what? Are we going to get another trick in diamonds? Oh, no, not likely. Not likely. So that can't be right, can it? What am I going to do? Am I going to defend actively or passively? Well, I think I can get two club tricks, but two club tricks and a diamond trick, that, that's only three tricks. What in the world am I going to do? They're in a game contract. I have 14 points in my hand. What does my partner have? Nothing. Nothing. He's busted. Busted. That 10 of diamonds is probably the best card he has in his hand. So what to do? Active or passive? Passive. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. A lot of people, after taking this ace of diamonds, would just put the ace of king of clubs on the table. 
Notice that sets up the queen here. And now the declarer has no more worries. He's got the ace, king, queen of spades, and then the ace of hearts is in the dummy. Contract bid and made. End of story. But let's look at this dummy. Question that someone has sent me. Uh, well, a couple of people have said that this is a while back. You've got to, you talked about a strong hand versus a weak hand. Are you talking about the person who's trying to figure out what to to lead? Or are you talking about the opponent? Well, well, when you're a defender and the auction indicates that declarer's hand is very strong and the dummy hand is weak, for instance, if declarer opened two clubs mm -hmm. and yet they end up in only a game contract, that indicates that the dummy doesn't have as many as 10 or 11 points or they'd be in a slam, wouldn't they? So in that instance, sometimes it's the dummy that's very strong because uh, maybe the opener bid a minor and responder bid a major suit and the opener jumped a game in that suit. Sometimes it's the dummy that's very strong and declares hand that's weak. When you have that kind of situation, and you can tell that from the bidding, when one hand jumps, it shows at least an invitational hand. And when they jump all the way to game, they're showing that 19 to 21 point hand. So it's relatively easy to tell when you have one hand that's strong and the other hand is weak. When you're sitting here as opening leader, thinking about how you're going to defend and what would be your best choice. When the opponents have bid in that manner and you have reason to believe that one of the hands is very strong and the other one is not, that is usually a sign when you want to defend passively. Has anybody here ever tried to play two no trump out of your own hand? It's gone two no trump, pass, pass, pass. It's not fun. It has <laughs> happened to me more than once. Generally, you cannot get to the board to take finesse. You have to play everything out of your hand. And if you play against good defenders, they don't break new suits for you. They just return a suit that you have already led. And it is very effective. It means that you're sitting there looking. I mean, you don't have ace, king, queen in every suit in your hand. Uh, that's way more than 20 points to begin with. And, and so you're sitting there trying to find eight tricks. And you have no idea how the points are divided. Because most people don't bid over a two no trump opening. Um, occasionally somebody does, but it's pretty rare. And, and so it's really, really hard, uh, especially when your, your defenders won't break a new suit for you, dadgummit. But it's very effective, very effective. And this is, this is the defender thinking about what he knows from the bidding. What do I know about those two hands and how can I apply it? Uh, do I know that there might be a long running suit? Is one hand strong and the other hand weak? Or did they just bid one spade, three spades, four spades? That, that's a pretty relaxed bidding sequence. And at least until you see the dummy, you have no reason to do anything other than defend passively. If you see the dummy come down with a nice suit, well, then that can be a sign that you need to switch to active defense right now. It's entirely possible that just because you've decided to defend passively at the beginning, that you don't change tactics once you see the dummy. Sometimes the dummy fools you and it has a very nice suit on the board. It's where most of his points are, but there's no indication that it's a long running suit. So just because you start off with a passive defense doesn't mean you might not switch to active. Does that make sense? That what when I'm talking about when there's a strong hand and a weak hand, I'm talking about the declarer and the dummy from the perspective of the opening leader when he's trying to decide whether he's going to defend actively or passively. These are the things that he thinks about. Did I answer the question? Yes. Now then, we're back to our old question here. What is East going to do after he takes the Ace of Diamonds, dropping the Singleton King here? What's he going to do? King of Clubs? Can't he? He could. 
but then that then it's game set match to the opponents. So let's look at this. There's no long suit in the dummy that can be set up for discards, right? So if there are any losers in any of these suits, they're not going anywhere. So this means that he should adopt a passive defense. And the best thing for him to do is just get out with a trump. Get out with a trump. Now, what this does, this is, this is an interesting thing. It isn't always obvious. But in order to have only two losers in the club suit, the declarer has to get to the dummy twice to be able to lead toward his queen twice. He can't lead clubs out of his hand. He leads a club out of his hand. He's just going to win the trick with the jack. That didn't help him set up the queen at all, did it? So he has to get to the board twice to lead clubs. He can get there once with the ace of trumps. But if you continue with diamonds, he's going to rough that. Well, does that help him? He doesn't have, he has an entry to the board still with the ace of, of trumps. And if that jack of diamonds is now good, he can pitch one of his clubs, right? Okay, that's not the answer. He never gets an entry with a spade. He could lead a spade, or he can lead a he can lead a uh, a heart. Leading a spade, I mean, he's leading through strength and up to weakness. That's what you want to do. He could lead a heart. A heart would be passive. A spade is also passive because he's not under leading anything. He's not finessing anything, and he sees only the jack ten on the board. If his partner has the king or queen of spades, he's not finessing him. He's giving him the chance to get a trick. So a spade lead is also passive. So he can get out with a spade or he can get out with a heart here. With only one entry to the dummy, though, he can only lead trumps once toward that queen. So just so long as East never leads a club, declarer cannot make the bid. If he leads out the ace and king of clubs, he has set up the queen for the declarer and solved all of his problems. That sometimes you've got to take your tricks in a hurry. But one of the ways you decide that that's not right here is because this is a very non-threatening dummy. It has one trick in it, and that's all. So this is an indication that we don't have to take our tricks in a hurry. We can just sit back and make the declarer do the work. If he has to play the club suit from his own hand, he loses three tricks and goes down one. Okay. The other thing that's kind of been subtly inserted here is some of the carding choices, uh, attitude in particular. You know, we've, we've started the, the third hand is starting to give attitude about what the, the opening lead was. And we've started to look a little bit at, at what card you lead out of, you know, given you've got these four cards and you're going to lead this suit, once you decide I'm going to lead this suit, which card are you going to lead? Those are all important things that play into giving partner information about your hand and it'll make your defense better. I encourage you to start thinking about buying a book on defense. It's <laughs> Hard stuff, as you've seen today, it requires a lot of intuition, but man, are there some, some values for you and your partner here. And, and remember, too, that you play defense about 50% of the time. If you can become a good defender, you can be an average bidder and card player and still do very well, very well. Uh, that defense is the name of the game. If you're a good defender, you will never lack for partners. Never, ever. So good thanks for coming today. Hi, this is Susan. Thanks for stopping by the Oklahoma Collective's YouTube channel. Basically, this channel shows recordings of our free 
one hour bridge lessons for advancing players that we offer every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. If you would like to join us, send your contact information to the email address shown on the screen, and we'll be happy to send you the link. If you would like to follow our channel and be notified when a new recording is uploaded, just click the Oklahoma Collective button below. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.